Hey there, it's Eric from Adventures in Collecting. You're about to see a wonky video. Uh, we, we sat down with Brian Volkweiss of the Nacelle Company uh, for about a half hour to talk about their upcoming uh, Up for Auction show, as well as some updates on the toys. However, due to some technical difficulties, the video feed from both myself and Dave uh, is a little uh, sketchy, um, but Brian's video is perfect, and he shows off a couple of uh, RoboForce and uh, Biker Mice from Mars prototypes. So we still wanted to put the video out there just so that way you could see him. So please ignore the weird glitchy faces from myself and uh, from Dave. But like I said, Brian's video is perfect. So when he's speaking, you will see him moving in real time. Whereas when you see us speaking, not so much. So uh, yeah, with that, that's I think that's good enough of a primer. Um, let's roll video and uh, enjoy the latest episode of Adventures in Collecting. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Adventures in Collecting. Hi, Dave. Dave, we're we're back, and uh, it, it's almost we like are. we're turning back the clock here. We have yeah. uh, we we do have a, a special guest, and uh, yeah, I I think I think this is one of our earliest guests making making his his at this point like umpteenth return. Mm -hmm. But this uh. Is <laughs> we we always miss you and you know what frankly uh we're beginning to wonder uh when this week's guest sleeps at this point <laughs> um between producing comedy specials making super cool toys and cranking out series after series of tv and streaming programming friend of the pod and returning guest brian volkweiss is an infinitely busy human person uh here with us to chat about his latest show up for auction starring chris hardwick and to update us on some of Nacelle's upcoming toys, we welcome Brian back to the show. Brian, welcome back to Adventures in Collecting, man. Uh, thank you for having me. It uh, it, it reminds me of the, the earliest days uh, of our uh, adventures in pop culture, uh, every time I see your names. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, we, we've we've expressed this, you know, it, it many times, both on the air and in person, but, uh, you know, as one of our earliest guests, uh it's it's always a pleasure to have you back on, um, and I know you're you're making the rounds. We got we got a brand new show to talk about, but since since uh, this is a first and foremost a toy podcast, uh, can you give us a, a little update on uh, on the toys of the Nacelleverse? How how are Roboforce, Spiker Mice, uh, Sectors, and and Cowboys of Moon Mesa coming along? Uh, well, they're all coming along great. Um... I'll go in order in which you said it. So Robo Force Waves 2 and 3 uh, are in production as we speak. Um, I could even, uh, is this audio only or is it video? Uh, it's video. Oh, okay. Then maybe, maybe, maybe by the end of this, I'll give you a couple of sneak peeks. Um, but um, so yeah, Robo Force uh, Wave 1 and 2, or sorry, 2 and 3 are in production uh biker mice from mars wave one is uh on the ocean and if you are to believe what we have been told uh which 50 50 you should um they will be uh at the port of los angeles on february 12th uh and then they'll be it'll, you know it'll take us about two to three weeks to get them to all the pre-orders and all the stores uh wave two three and four uh are in production now uh for um for biker mice i'm looking uh, i'm looking at limberger right now uh nice. and also the bikes the bikes are in production as well those are nice. a little bit further along um moo mesa is uh wave one is in production uh sectors wave two and maybe uh, maybe some bugs uh, are also in production. And uh, let's see. Uh, do, do, oh, and Power Lords uh, is also slowly but surely uh, moving forward. Yeah. So it's um, they. So when Robo Force comes out, the cartoon, um, you'll see in the first twenty seconds. Sectorians, Mumesa people. So a lot of that from, like I said, the first 20 seconds of our entire cartoon program 
um, that you will see some things that are also in production that I'm not going to bring up right now. Fair. Oh, awesome. Um, so is there anything you've learned from the first few waves of figures that you're applying to future waves? Yes. Uh, price is a big issue. Uh, so we, uh, you know, when RoboForce Wave 1 came out, you know, we had never made a toy before. And, you know, I've been very open about this. I thought it was insane. We were selling them for 50 bucks a piece, but we, we had no choice. Um, it just was what it was. We have since learned ways to get the prices down. Um, so RoboForce Wave 2 will hopefully be much closer to $30. Um, so price was a big thing. Biker mice, you know, again, this is tough economic times. Uh, you, you don't need CNN or Fox to tell you that. Um, so we really worked hard to get the price down and the quality up, which leads me to the second thing I learned, uh, ab crunch, ab crunch, ab crunch. Uh, we initially didn't have ab crunch uh, for biker mice. Uh, which was stupid of, of me. I, I'll take the hit. When, when I'm when I'm praising the company, uh, it's we. When I'm shitting on us, it's I. Um, but yeah, so we got you know when we announced the pictures of uh, of of biker mice wave one, the most common comment was, "Well, how the fuck are they going to sit on the bikes without the ab crunch?" And I was like, <laughs> "Oh, that's a pretty good note." So, uh, so yeah, so we added ab crunch and, you know, oh, and by the way, I, I, it's funny. I, I, I don't know why I, I do know why I forget this, but we also had the expanse wave one yes. uh, in production uh, yeah. uh, is our biggest wave. So it's always great that I forget it. Uh, but it is our, I mean, we're launching with eight figures, um, simultaneously, uh, two packs. We have two two packs that are coming. Um, some of the goals are physical objects that are not characters. It is the biggest craziest thing uh, we we have ever done by by far. And again, full disclosure, we've only been doing this for two and a half years. So, what does it mean when I say we've ever done? But it's it's a big 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 launch, and we have a lot of news information videos pictures coming out um just looking at the schedule where's that schedule yeah uh this month oh awesome very oh. very cool yeah really cool so, so we have some stuff going on just a few things i feel Not, like i just, just rambled just for an hour no that's perfect no. you actually yeah. it's it's almost like you've done this spiel before today or <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not today. Not no, today. really? Oh, no. It's oh, all wow. been Disney, Disney, Disney. So this is very refreshing. I mean, I love talking about Disney, and I know I'm here to talk about a specific TV show, but I do love talking about toys. Well, I know that a lot of the pictures, uh, I think it was just Pasadena Cam Comic Con, uh, the, the gray models of those bikes, they look fantastic. Uh, really, I know a lot of people are really, really excited to, uh, you know, to get those in hand. It's, it's one of those one of those properties that has a, uh, a, you know, a very, very big fan base. So, you know, super. Yeah, oh, sure. look at that. Look at that guy. Oh, wow. This is terrible. Um, terrible is, and again, I, I don't think we've actually shown the prototype before. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think we have. Um, so it's interesting. This is why I love doing interviews for my, my office. That's not good. Oh, don't break anything. I, too late. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, I literally uh, just knocked one of his eyebrows off. So uh, don't don't be freaked out. It's a one eyebrow. But so this this is Kamudgeon, who, like I said, normally has two eyebrows. Kamudgeon is a character in the RoboForce cartoon. This is our first toy that's based on an original idea from Nacelle and not, a, you know, a copyright, you know, we acquired. So this is a, he's the comic relief. He's a pretty funny big character in RoboForce. This is Terrible, who has two eyebrows. By the way, my wife's idea to have the eyebrows. Um, he is a character in Biker Mice from Mars, 
but he's also the character this the the toy connected to this is the free giveaway for people that buy all our comic books on day one so we have a whole comic book series coming out that we're doing with oni publishing um and this for people who buy all 13 issues uh on day one for 89.89 what a great price uh also happens to be my lucky number what a coincidence um <laughs> they uh they will get uh an exclusive uh terrible figure who uh has a two on his head for reasons we have not figured out yet but we wanted to use the same mold that is a far from terrible deal yeah good call Eric. yeah um so you mentioned it before uh you know you're 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 no stranger to the world of disney but uh, but your latest show blends your penchant for collectibles uh, with the House of Mouse. So yes. uh, tell us tell us about uh, up for auction. So you know it's funny. I've known Chris Hardwick for you know at least five or six years, and he called me up one day. I mean, this is as cliched a Hollywood story as you'll hear, but it's also happens to be true. Uh, he called me up. He was like, "We're friends. You like Disney." I like Disney. You're a collector. I'm a collector. There's a the biggest Disney auction in history coming up. I'm friends with the Van Eatons who own the auction house. A couple weeks later, we had a meeting with the Van Eatons. They were down to let us film the entire process. And we took pitch meetings. CW was the best home for us. And we're, you know, next week. Eight episodes drop uh, all at the same time on February eighth, um, and it's it's a show, it's a show for anybody who has even mild interest in Disney. It's a show for anybody who is does auctions or wonders how auctions work. By the way, I mean I've been partaking in Hollywood auctions for about twenty years. I had no idea what goes into them. I thought I did, but I didn't. I I don't know how they make money. I mean, they have dozens and dozens and dozens of employees. Those, um, the the books they send, the catalogs they send to everybody, uh, I mean, cost a fortune to, to, to publish. Um, it, it is a very complicated operation. So it, it also really shows how that works. Um, but it really is about the Disney items um, that we tell everybody about, because as you know, what we try to do is massive amounts of research and then regurgitate that into a very fun, humorous and emotional story. So people enjoy watching it, but I don't mean to use a dirty word, uh, but might actually learn something as well, uh, about the stuff that they love. Well, especially coming from the, um, you know, the Disney plus show. But um, speaking of Disney parks, we're Disney parks people. You and Chris are Disney people. What do you think makes the Disney park items we'll see at the auction in the show special? Again, you know, it's funny. I'm like really biased, but they're Disney. You know, it. The, these are, you know, I'll give you an example. I'll use myself as the guinea pig. I bought, well, while on set and supposedly directing, uh, I bought one of the baskets from the original Star Tours ride. Mm. So if you remember when Star Tours first opened up until they redid it uh, around 2003, when you were on the line in the building, in the ceiling, they had all these baskets going around on a track that were full mm -hmm. of toy parts. So I yep. now have one of those baskets in my collection at home hanging from the ceiling. I went to that ride with my grandfather and I remember, you know, I was eight or nine years old and I remember vividly, I mean, it felt as cheesy as this sounds. It felt like I was in the movie. And I remember holding my grand, my grandfather's the greatest person I've ever met in my life. And I'm sitting there holding his hand, waiting to do this for the first time. And I know this is cheesy. I know this is ridiculous, but that basket that's now in my collection, it, and I want to make sure you can see my quotes, it saw, that basket saw me and my grandfather 30 years ago 
waiting to get on the ride. And that's like, I'm not, I'm not going to put down any other parks, but I've been going to other parks my whole life. I I'm sure I went to other parks with my grandfather. I don't remember, but I remember it's, there's something about Disney and I know what it is. We could talk about it for 20 hours, but there's something about Disneyland and Disney world and all the other parks where you just have an emotional attachment that at least I personally have not found at other parks. You know, like pu- putting putting these yeah. questions together and 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 getting ready for this show, you know, to 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 see, you know, uh, to to see the 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 new show, I started to think about it. You know, like it it's it's interesting, right? Because you have people that collect prop replicas because a film, a certain film, means something to them. You know, whether it's a piece of a costume, you know, even something as simple as like a cup that's on a desk in a, in a movie, right, or a TV show. Like people people gravitate towards these prop replicas, but you know, I, I love that you told that story because it's exactly where my mind went. It's like mm-hmm. if you're getting a piece of Disney World for people that that, you know, love and like kind of are ingratiated into that Disney culture. Like it really is. It's like, no, no, like we me and that piece have a relationship like we actually have a physical relationship where like we've been in the same room together. And now it's been sitting in a warehouse for God knows how long. Like I want to give that a proper home. It also reminded me how like you know, Disney in Disneyland, Star Tours lives in Tomorrowland and how like drastically different the presentation is compared to Florida. And like, yeah. I immediately remembered like, okay, when the line's too long, they open up that second little holding room for you to weave through and yeah. Have it's you just... been to Disney Paris? Um, no, not... Hopefully soon. I... Hopefully soon. Well, I mean, they, they, they have a full size ad at uh, out front. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's unreal. It's it's unreal, like full size, like full 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 one to one. That's crazy. Yeah, eventually I want to get out there. Dave, yeah, Dave luckily has some has some some travel planned, uh, to to Europe. So I'm yeah, cross- I'm gonna live vicariously through you. <laughs> it is wonderful. It is it is wonderful. I I've been there twice. Uh, God, do I love that park. So one of the things that's kind of in the DNA of all of the the Nacelles catalog is the very distinct style in which you guys present your programming um, with up for auction airing on CW, as opposed to kind of being on uh, one of the other streaming platforms. Can we expect that same kind of signature style of storytelling with this? Absolutely. You know, for better or worse. And so far, it definitely seems for the better. You know, we really work with the same team on on all our shows You know, you'll notice a name on almost everything we do. Guy named Ben Frost, Nick Farrell. um, You know, these are, you know, and I've worked with both of them uh, since Toys That Made Us season one. Um, So you'll see uh, it's it's not an accident that we tend to use a similar style um, from show to show to show. Now, again, we do some other shows like Down to Earth with Zac Efron. You will not see their names on that because those are very different shows. Um, But we work very, we, I, I steal the, I'm I'm not trying to name drop, but I believe in giving people credit for shit. They say Um, um, Craig Ferguson, we were pitching a show um, that we did on history channel uh, back in the day. And in the pitch, the way he described the show we were selling, he said, we like to wrap the spinach in ice cream. And that's kind mm. of what we do, except obviously it's not spinach, but it people don't like to learn. Like, and I'm the same. I like I'm not saying that about every human on the planet except me. I'm the same. So if I'm like, oh, if you watch this, you're gonna learn, like, yeah, I want to have a good time. I just had a long yeah. day. Um, but if you can make it fun, if you can make it enjoyable, but also have pathos. Also really try and, you know, hit those, those tear, those, get those tears a little bit going like every now and then, by the way, Um, that's what gets people to come back and watch every episode. That's what gets people to come back and just really bond with a show. And that's what we try to do. But we also try to pick topics that people care about. 
you know, before I green light anything, my first question is, what's the constituency or who's the constituency? Like we have some shows in production right now that we haven't announced. They're all about things that people care about, but maybe they haven't really asked, wait, where did this come from? My grandma played with it. My great grandpa played with it. I play with it. My five-year-old plays with it. But what is this? And we that's the worlds we try and go into. Well, that's I, I know what we're both, you know, really excited for, you know, for this new yeah. show. Um, as is traditional on the show, we do like to ask all of our guests a final question. And since we have asked you so many different versions of the final question, um, we did come up with an additional one to to close us out here. Uh, Dave, hit Brian with the final question. So the final question for today is, if you could only experience one Disney attraction for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? You know, it's funny. My favorite attraction is the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland. But I'm trying to think if that, yeah, I mean, if I could only do one, Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch tied for second place. But yeah, if I had to only do one, yeah, it'd probably be uh, Indiana Jones at Disneyland. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why it's not like everybody loves it. But like, it's never like I've never met anyone else who it's their favorite attraction. Uh, it but to me, I mean, God, is that the, it, it? it's just real. Like, it feels real. And like Rise of the Resistance, I mean, you literally feel like you're in the movie. Actually, to be honest with you, like I, I feel like I'm in three movies when I'm on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mind blowing. But like, yeah, the the effect when you're backing away from the ball in the Indiana Jones ride. As amazing as Rise of the Resistance is. It's there is nothing like that moment where backing away from the ball and then accelerating forward and the ball rolls over your head. I mean, I, it's and it's one of these things like Rise of the Resistance. The first time I did it, on, and it was before it had officially opened to the public. I was lucky I got snuck in, and and by the way, by snuck in, I was brought by a high ranking member of the Disney Corporation. So if that's what counts <laughs> these days, I'm doing all right. Um, but um, I remember getting off a of rise of the resistance and like it was me and about five other people, including my then like five year old or four year old son. And we just sat there looking at each other for like 30 seconds. No one talked. And we were just like blinking like, oh, Oh my God. But the second time I did it, the third time I did it, each time I did it, that feeling diminished a little bit because I knew what to expect. I knew where to look and I could say, I have never done the Indiana Jones ride and not gotten the same exact feeling I did the first time I went on it in 1998 and went under the ball. It's never wow. gone away. And the craziest thing is I now have seen how that effect works with the lights on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know exactly how it works. I still get that feeling. Yeah. And like that's, that's, awesome. that's why it would be my favorite ride. It's it's such a great experience too. like even the immersion because of the way it's laid out. The queue is so deep and you're just walking through that cave forever like. And then the ride just hits you like it's so good. It's the best cue. I forgot to even mention that when you drive past the snake, you can feel the fire because it's real fire. Yep. Uh, the blow darts again, simple gag, simple gag. You got compressed air. You got a compressed air tank. It's a simple gag, but God damn, does it work? It just works. I mean, Tony Baxter uh, at his best. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. That's awesome. Awesome answer. My my answer is crazy. I, I 
my mine is is easily the carousel of prog progress easily like without I, that's my answer if i could sit in that rotating theater for the rest of my life once a day mm, mm, I, 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 I think if an asteroid hit you today there would be nobody left on this planet who 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 would say that so i i <laughs> you, uh, i do, I do for, love the for, carousel though <laughs> but but I, I but I mean I'm not even trying to be funny. I salute you because uh, ninety percent of the people would answer that question with Haunted Mansion. Yeah, and I'm definitely. Like, I love Haunted Mansion. <laughs> I get it. But why does everybody love this ride so much? Yeah, yeah. yeah for me, I, like, I got those same feelings for Rise of the Resistance. But like, I just haven't gone on Tron for the first time. I'm really curious to see how that hits me every subsequent time moving forward because i really loved that like that just was you know kind of one of my my movie dreams come true like oh i'm in tron uh, i did tron also before it opened and uh i i it was mind-blowing mind, -blowing. mind -blowing. Mm -hmm. and i I, I don't want to get into any details, but I definitely saw some stuff that I don't think made it to the, the actual ride that opened. So I am very curious to see what it's like. You know, the interesting thing about making behind the attraction was I frequently saw these attractions from the inside with all the lights on before I rode them when they mm. were new. So yeah. it was always interesting. Cosmic Rewind I mean, I was there at five in the morning uh, filming the behind the scenes stuff. And then like only like 18 hours later, I actually wrote it. Um, so I'm very curious to do Tron as a civilian. Yeah, I well, love the queue with the grid. So good. Yeah, I can't wait. We're 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 planning a trip to Disney World in the fall. So I'm I'm very excited to bring the kids and and get on some of these new rides that I haven't been on yet. So very excited. But uh, before we let you go, uh, just remind our listeners, where can they catch Up for Auction? It is Up for Auction, eight episodes that all drop on the same day, which is February 8th, only on the CW. On, and it's their digital service that they're transitioning to. So it's free. You just have to sign up. It takes I, I signed up myself a couple months ago, about 45 seconds. Awesome. Brian, thank you so much for for stopping by today and uh and chatting with us. We're we're super excited for the show, super excited of yeah, course for the new toys. Um and, and we'll we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye Brian. See ya.